This build request goes out to Aaron Summers, who wanted me to take a look at doing a two-weapon fighting build for a Slayer. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, doing a build request video. Uh, these ones are a little bit tricky to get out just with uh, everything I'm already trying to do, and then life, etc., yada yada yada, work and everything, all those wonderful things that pile up, but... I will try to get them out as I can. If you want to submit requests, just go down to the comments of uh, whatever video. I usually am pretty decent about getting back on notifications and the like. So I will try to get everything put together and put out, but it may take me a few weeks. Just like I said, things get busy, 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 and ADHD brain, tired dad brain, all of those things just kind of add up to... Uh, your typical forgetful lore master who kind of gets lost muddling through the various books and tasks and everything. So, let's go ahead and start figuring things out here for our two weapon fighting slayer build. To begin with, we, for our stats, our stats are going to stay largely the same from uh, our other slayer build. Looking at an 18 in strength, 14 for dex, 13 in constitution, 12, 10, and 8 for intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, respectively. However, if you are dealing with a, uh, a lower amount of points, you know, you're not doing a 25 point buy, then going with strength of 16, dex of 16, and con of 14 can also be very viable for you. To that end, we're also going to want to stick with being human for that plus two bonus to any stat that you select, ideally your strength score, and getting that important extra feat and having extra skill points. Also, the favored class bonus comes in really handy here, getting us an extra Slayer talent for every six levels of Slayer we have. Now, that's only three extra Slayer talents, but Slayer talents go a long, long way towards making many different kinds of builds very, very viable. Now, for traits, we're going to leave the three traits that we had discussed before. Armor Expert, for when you wear any armor, reduce the check penalty by one to a minimum of zero. Reactionary, for a plus two bonus to initiative. Or Indomitable Faith, for a plus one bonus to your will saves, which is where you do want things to be shorn up a little bit. Now, Overall, I would say Reactionary is probably going to be the most ideal overall. It's just, it's hard to beat a plus two bonus to initiative, but any of these other two will work out just fine. Now, as far as Slayer talents go, for you're going to want to pick up Ranger Combat Style again, but this time go with two weapon fighting. So then this kicks in at level two, six, and ten. And for this, you're going to want to take two weapon fighting, improved two weapon fighting, and greater two weapon fighting. Now, some of you may be asking, wait a minute, those have high dex requirements, and this is a relatively low dexterity build, or at least not high enough to qualify for all of these. So what gives? Well, because it's the ranger combat style, we can take these feats while bypassing the normal requirements. This will go a long way towards freeing up how you're able to put your build together so that you can have a high strength two weapon fighting build. Now, for your level four Slayer talent, you're still gonna wanna take trap finding. This is just wildly invaluable and something that does need to be made note of here that uh, Captain Crank had pointed out when I was doing the, uh, the Slayer gu uh, Guide series is that not only does this give you the trap uh, disabled de uh, device as a class skill, and lets you add one half your Slayer level to perception checks to find and disable uh, device checks to disarm them, this also includes magic traps. That's absolutely incredible and definitely puts you on par with the Rogue for one of their core defining class features and it really does a lot to make the Rogue obsolete in the long run of things, so this is definitely worth getting even with this build. Going on from there though, for your level 6 bonus that you get from uh, being a human and taking that favorite class bonus, you want to take Rogue Talent Combat Trick. Now, yes, picking up a feat is maybe the less original uh, option, but for this we want to take Improved Trip. 
This will stack with the feat Dirty Fighting to increase your plus two bonus for flanking to a plus four for the trip maneuver, which will be very, very invaluable towards making sure that uh, you're able to pull this off. Since, uh, uh, Aaron, if I'm not mistaken, you had uh, wanted to do a two weapon fighting build that focused on tripping and really locking opponents down. Then for your level 8 bonus, you're going to pick up Rogue Talent's Slow Reactions. Opponents damaged by your sneak attack can't make attacks of opportunity for one round. Given that you're building to take advantage of flanking bonuses, using dirty fighting and the like, this is going to allow you to trigger attacks of opportunity, particularly if you're in the thick of it with multiple enemies and get multiple flanking bonuses with them. Uh, particularly if you're paired up with a druid or a wizard or a sorcerer, whoever has access to the summon monster or summon nature ally spells, they can set it up so that you can uh, be in the midst of enemies with allied creatures all around you. Even if they're relatively low power, you can still uh, use this to make all kinds of attacks against the opponents around you deal sneak attack damage to them and make it so that they can't make attacks of opportunity for one round that's huge that's a huge amount of uh, controlling enemy actions right there now going on from there we're not doing a full complete build we're moving on to feats so level one you're going to take weapon focus still as your human bonus feat this lets you gain a plus one attack bonus with a selected weapon. You're going to want to go with whatever your chosen weapon is for this build. Scythe in this case. Uh, now, Aaron Summers, uh, you had asked me to or asked me to look at a build with using scythes, particularly small size scythes. Blah. Blurred my words there and bit my tongue. But uh, the, there's an, a small, small issue to be aware of there. Given that they're a small, you're using the small size of the weapon, you're using a size that was intended for a smaller creature. So you're actually going to take a minus two penalty for using the wrong sized weapon. To avoid this, I would recommend maybe going with uh, Sickles, just because Sickles deal 1d6 points of damage, they just don't have that higher critical multiplier that Scythes do. If that's important to you, then obviously stick with Scythes. Uh, certainly it is novel and it is different. Also, both scythes and sickles have the trip feature with them, meaning that they will give you that same bonus to trip attempts. Then at level one for your regular feat, you're going to take power attack, which is that minus one to attack, plus two to damage, or plus three if you're two-handing weapon, and increases every four attack bonus. So minus two attack, plus four damage, or plus six if you're two-handing, by the time you hit level four. For level three, I'd recommend you take Quick Draw. Now, this allows you to draw your weapons as a free action. That's gonna be pretty handy considering that you have two weapons handy. You're focusing on a two weapon fighting build. And uh, given that with your Slayer talents, you now have two weapon fighting by this point, this is going to help to make sure that you're being able to take your full array of actions during your turn and not really mess with your action economy too much. This actually tips things into your favor. Now, going on from there, at level 5, you're going to want to pick up Dirty Fighting. When making a combat maneuver check against a target that you are flanking, trade the plus 2 bonus to prevent the attack of opportunity that normally happens if you don't have the feat for it, such as, well, tripping somebody. If you have a feat that lets you make the maneuver without a taking attacks of opportunity, then you get a plus four bonus to that maneuver, such as tripping the target. This feat counts as having uh, dexterity and intelligence of 13, combat expertise, and unarmed strike for meeting improved combat maneuver feats, as well as feats that require improved combat maneuver feats. So, uh, so this helps you to meet a lot of requirements without having to really move your stats around in a way that you meet the requirements for them, or burn your precious limited number of feats picking up what's required to get into these improved combat maneuver feats and anything else in that successive chain, such as a Greater Trip, for example. Then, at level 7, we're going to take Greater Trip, gain another plus 2 bonus that stacks with the bonus given by Improved Trip. When you trip an opponent, they provoke attacks of opportunity. 
and then at level 9 you're going to take combat reflexes. Gain a number of extra attacks of opportunity equal to your dexterity modifier. Normally you're limited to 1. Now with our dex uh, dexterity score of 14 you're looking at 2 extra attacks of opportunity there. Or if you've gone on ahead and gotten yourself a 16 or you have an item that is increasing your dexterity score then you're looking at plus 3 or even more. So you can really start to pile on a lot of damage. But from there, you know, what feats you want to pick up really just depends. Since you have uh, um, combat reflexes, you could pick up uh, uh, Vicious Stomp, for example. Vicious Stomp would deal allow you to deal a ton of damage because not only it, when you trip somebody do they provoke attacks of opportunity, but Vicious Stomp, when a target falls prone, they trigger more attacks of opportunity. The only factor that might be limiting for you in this case is that the attack has to be an unarmed strike because, well, you're stomping on them. So your damage might be limited in that case, but because you are um, attacking the target, presumably making the trip attempt, getting the attack of opportunity on them with that trip attempt, and then taking another attack of opportunity when they fall prone, you're going to deal a significant amount of damage. And don't forget, when they get back up, unless they have uh, uh, specific feats or abilities that let them do so, when they get back up, they're typically going to provoke another attack of opportunity. And you have enough of a dexterity bonus that you can really take advantage of that every round, should you want to. And then top that off with the fact that you're doing two-weapon fighting using sickles, and while they're only doing... Or, or sickles or sides, small size specifically, while they're only doing 1d6 points of damage a pop plus your strength modifier, um, when you're striking the target, you know, you are really going to be stacking on a lot of damage in that instance. Um, and yeah, just being able to just flurry through and just trip so many targets and make life absolutely hell for them and probably your DM, this is going to do a lot for you. Now, let's go with your trip attack uh, by level 10. By the time you hit level 10, when you get uh, greater two-weapon fighting and everything, you're going to be looking at a plus 10 base attack bonus, plus 5 bonus from your strength modifier, a plus 4 trip bonus, plus 2 dirty fighting bonus, and then the plus 2 bonus from the trip feature for either the sickle or the scythe, and a plus 1 bonus from using weapon focus. Uh, you are going to take a minus two penalty on the attack for using a small weapon and then a minus four penalty uh, for two weapon fighting without a light weapon in the offhand because normally a scythe is a two handed weapon and it just goes down to being counting as a martial weapon if you're using the small version. But you're still looking at a total bonus of a plus 18 trip combat maneuver check right there, if I've done my math correctly. Now, if you were to switch over to doing uh, to doing this with sickles instead of scythes, then you're losing that minus two penalty for using a small weapon, and you're looking at a plus 20 trip uh, combat maneuver check. That's pretty significant, especially at level 10 there. You know, you're really specialized into it, you're really focused on it, but the beauty of this build is, is that dirty fighting, if you've got that flanking bonus, this will still let you try to do other maneuvers without taking attacks of opportunity. So if you wanted to uh, disarm, faint, uh, try to sunder weapons, this will let you do that. You're still going to be overall more specialized into tripping. That's where you're going to get the most significant bonus. But this will still let you do all those other things. And depending on uh, your later feat selection as well as your talent selection, there's a whole array of possibilities ahead of you there. Um, you know, a level 10 character like this, being able to do this, that's pretty considerable. That's pretty darned effective, I'd say. Is it the most optimal build? Obviously not. I mean, again, if you're going to stick with uh, using small scythes rather than going over to sickles, you know, you're operating with a penalty there that doesn't necessarily need to be there. But damn, is that ever unique and definitely interesting. I hope this helps. I hope you found this useful. And I hope this meets uh, what you were looking for. Uh, 
Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts. Remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Hit those like or dislike buttons, and I'll engage in discussion with you all down below. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.